if you want super juicy ribs, super tender in less than three hours, you've come to the right place. Let's go. It looks a bit grumpy. What's that all about? Sorry. These Swift St. Louis pork spare ribs are all over social media at the moment, even in the States, but particularly in the UK. Um, yeah, they're, they're really great. They're 9.99 at the moment in farm foods, and I managed to get a few. As I say, <laughs> all over Facebook, all over social media, everyone's trying to get their hands on them. I thought I'd do a video on how to make these super juicy, super tender, flavorful in less than three hours. So let's get to prepping. Just be careful not to get the juices everywhere. Okay, get that out of the way. So pat them dry. Now these are about 1.5 kilo. They do go up to about 1.7, 1.8 kilo. Same price, 9.99. As I say, great deal. Grab them if you can, because they're well worth it and they are proper tasty, to be fair. I'm not gonna go mad. I'm not doing a competition or anything. So yeah, I might just cut that little bit off there, but I'm gonna leave them as is. I'm not even gonna take the membrane off. There's not a lot of meat this side of the bone anyway. You can bite around it quite easily. Up to you, if you wanna get them off, get it off. For a binder, I'm gonna use French's mustard. I'm not gonna to go too mad this side where the bones are, but I will on the meat part of it. Let's just get that little bit off there. Flip them over. I mean, you can see all that intramuscular fat. These are gonna be awesome. I'll take that glove off. Okay, so today I'm gonna to use shotgun dust. I got this off a good friend, Jason Latham. He's up in Manchester at the Quarter House. Absolutely awesome place. Barbecue and bar, looking at all the posts on Facebook and whatnot. The food looks amazing. Jason's won many barbecue competitions. He competed up at the Jack last year with Tony, a good friend of his. Don't forget those sides. Just gonna give this a fairly liberal coating, then we're gonna let it set. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna let it sit there until it absorbs and you can see it looks shiny and wet. Flip them over. Should have done this side first, but not to worry. I'm not in a competition, but normally you do this side first. The upside is your presentation side, so yeah, you would do that. These are gonna have an awesome bark on them. We're not gonna do any spritz in whatsoever. Get those sides. So with that being said, let's get the coals rolling. Let's get going. Okay, so today we're using big K. I like to use all different types of charcoal and lump wood. But I do prefer lump wood when it comes to cooking on the barbecue, to be fair and totally honest. So we just get one of those starters in there and one over here. Get them lit, get this up to temp. It's absolutely blowing a hoolie, by the way. I might have to do a voiceover. F you. Oh, oh, is this ever gonna happen? Go, 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 go. Go on, baby, don't go out. Right, shut the lid, quick. I'll put the grate in in a minute. So before I wanted to put these ribs on, I just wanted to show you what I mean by looking wet. The great thing about this rub is it's bringing out a nice mahogany color to those ribs. So basically what you're looking for is giving it enough time. Obviously this rub has got salt in, so it will bring the moisture out, but then it will absorb it back in and take that flavor in with it of the rub. So that's what we're looking at. Just wanted to show you. Hopefully the camera can pick that up, but it is looking a lovely golden. Looking through the camera right now, it is actually looking darker than it is in real life, but just gives you an idea of what to look for. Now, as I say, we did go quite liberal on that rub, but it's not gonna hurt, they're meaty ribs. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, or pork ribs dinner. So you can add a small chunk of wood, but for this cook, I'm gonna add one big lump of cherry, and that's gonna give them a real nice flavor as well as that mahogany smoke color. Okay, so it's absolutely blowing a hoolie. It's gonna be great fun trying to keep this at the temp I want it, which is gonna be around 150 to 175 degrees Celsius, which means it'll be between 300 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit. As you see, I put a big lump of cherry in there, just chuck that in, give it a lovely smoke flavor, and also add to that mahogany color, like I say. So we're just gonna wait for these to get to temp, chuck the ribs on, and then we are go. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so despite the raging wind, we finally got there. I'm gonna be super quick about getting these on. Basically, with all ribs, 
push them together. That's how they cook. You'll get a plumper rib that way. So I'm gonna shut that nice and quick. We give it two hours. I'm not gonna spritz. I'm not gonna do anything like that. We're just gonna let them rock at two hours, wrap them for about half hour to 45 minutes, and then we're done. So I'll see you in a couple of hours, guys. Cheers. Okay, so I'm not gonna mess around here. We've been rocking in between the two temps that I said. It's been fairly steady considering the wind. I've not even opened it once. We're bang on two hour mark now. So let's take a look. Oh yeah, they're looking good. Yep, perfect. A bit dark around the edge there, but I'm not worried about that. Got a tiny bit of pull off on the bone. They're still feeling very tight. So now we're just gonna chuck them in tin foil, wrap them with some apple juice and get them back on. So let's get going. You can see there, it's fairly flexible, but it's still got a bit of tightness to it. So I've chosen a nice local Cox's apple juice. It's quite a sweet apple, so it's gonna work well with these ribs. Yes, you can put butter, you can put brown sugar, you can add all sorts at this stage. But me personally, I always just use a little bit of liquid, whether that be water, apple juice, anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold it up slightly. Just so we can pour that juice in. So I'm probably not even gonna go a quarter of a cup. As you can see in that bottle there, there's hardly any been taken out. It's just enough to steam these up a little bit, just to get them nice and tender. So fold that over. Nice and tight, without breaking the tin foil. Just gonna fold that under there, protects it from the bones. So, over again. Just gonna double check. No piercing there from the bones, otherwise if you do pierce that tin foil, the juice will leak out and that's gonna defeat the object of making these juicy and moist and tender. As I say, not messing about, let's get them straight back on the grill. And that's it, 40 minutes and then we'll unwrap them. Be ready to go. Trust me, it works. I've had to move the barbecue because the wind and rain's been terrible and I don't want to get my camera gear wet, but still got plenty of coals. Just want to show you this, honey red barbecue sauce. This is also from Jason Latham. Love from the streets is his company's name. He gifted me some rubs and, and sauces as a gift and totally thanks for that, mate. Tried many of them already and they're awesome. So let's get these glazed up. Oh yeah. That instant smell is Honestly, 100% amazing. Do the old foil boat, purely because of the weather and just the way I just want to get this done quick without messing around. So what we'll do now, is we'll glaze these bad boys up with a load of this sauce. Five minutes and we are golden. Let's go. Well, what can I say guys? Does this method work every time? Yes, it does. Have I done it a fair few times? Yes, I have. Is this gonna be an awesome rack of ribs? Yes, it is. Check it out. That's what you want right there. Flex, it's still got a slight tiny bit of resistance. So they're not gonna be complete mush. This is perfect. So let's slice in. Oh, let's get one of them. I mean, the smell is amazing. Look at that. You tell me that's not a mouth-watering rib right there. Let's just slice a couple from this end. Kind of going in different directions, but these are gonna be good. Oh yes, very juicy, very succulent. Let's try a bite. That sauce. The cherry smoke, it's just an absolute winner. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I mean, look at that bad boy. If 
you want to bite a good 40 minutes to an hour. If you want them to absolutely fall apart, go an hour and a half wrapped. So you're looking at three and a half hours total, but definitely, definitely very good. Mm. Awesome flavour all the way through that. So I can't stop eating them. Well, there you have it, guys. Swift St. Louis cut ribs done in just under three hours. Yeah, I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous. There's no doubt about it. Look, I mean, no resistance. Massive smoke ring due to that big lump of cherry on there. I can't stop eating them, sorry. <laughs> if you like the video, please remember to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe and it helps us out massively as a channel to grow. Loving what I'm doing, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it out in this weather. Unbelievable, but I've got a day off and I've got to make a video and I've got to eat some ribs. Remember guys, go out and cook something exceptional. Got it all over my fingers. Good stuff though. I'll see you when I see ya. Cheers guys. Mate, can't leave these alone. Mm, absolute melt in your mouth. Best 9.99 I've ever spent, I know.